bees. They are the most important pollinators on the globe. A third of the food in the world is pollinated by bees, and farms rely on them for large crop yields. In fact, the whole farming industry depends on bees and their pollination. Without these bees, harvests would be pitifully small. Over the 100 million years that bees have flown on the face of this earth, they have evolved to be pollinators. Each one has a long proboscis to extract nectar, powerful mandibles to cover honeycomb and wax, compound eyes and wings that beat up to 240 times a second. In addition, they each have a stinger that can be used for defense. However, once the stinger injects the venom into the target, the bee's abdomen area is taken from the bee, as well as its life. Bees live together in hives and have a complex system to distribute their workload. Worker bees are female, living up to a month. They work 12 hours a day to collect nectar and pollen or attend to their young. When they discover a new food source, they perform an intricate dance to convey directions to the source. This is called the waggle dance. The waggle dance involves the worker bees moving in the direction of the source and using the amount of movement time to demonstrate the distance. The other bees catch on to the stands and are able to make their way to the new food source. The male bees in the hive are called drones. They live to reproduce and do nothing else. Each drone dies after mating with the queen. The queen with a larger and longer abdomen is usually the only fertile woman in the hive and can lay up to 2,000 eggs a day. This is their only purpose, to turn out more workers for the hive. In the ecosystem, bees are a keystone species. Producers, such as flowers, cannot reproduce without bees as pollination. Without bees, these plants would perish, resulting in a population crash for the primary consumers. This would create a ripple effect, harming the secondary and tertiary consumers. If the bees start to disappear, ecosystems all across the world would cripple and collapse. This is a frightening scenario that is happening today. Bees are dying and vanishing all over the world because of an unknown disorder called CCD. CCD stands for Colony Collapse Disorder. Scientists are not sure what exactly is causing the death of the bees. Research has shown that it could be caused by mites, disease, malnutrition, a change in their environment, or a combination of all of these factors. Varroa mites are a huge problem for the bees. They suck blood from adults and take nutrients from larvae. While they do this, they inject disease as the mites are vectors. The disease weakens the bees and shortens their lifespan. This can spread among the colony and result in deformed legs, wings, and other body parts. If it spreads to the whole hive, soon there will be no healthy workers to support it. The worst scenario is that the disease makes its way to the queen bee. Queenlessness would be the final nail in the coffin for the bee colony. The mites develop in larvae and spread from workers to drones. They also feed on hemolymph, a fluid similar to blood in the circulatory system. Males and females split up the work to take down the hive. Males feed on the young larvae. Females feed on young, immature bees and adult bees. Malnutrition is also a possible headlining factor for CCD. Bees need protein, and they get almost all of it from pollen. Many plants that are abundant in it and full of nutrients are only limited to part of the year. Also, bees that are imported to pollinate only one type of flower get significantly less nutrients. This is because a mix of different pollens are much more nutritious than one type of pollen. This lack of nutrients weakens their immune system, 
which will hurt bees as insecticides come in. Pesticides are used along with insecticides to keep pests and unwanted insects away. Unfortunately for bees, they are insects. Unwanted or not, the insecticides affect the bees by interrupting their nervous systems. There are two ways that the insecticides bring the bees down. Direct contact of the insecticide can sometimes be too much for the bee. They will die immediately before returning to the hive. The second possibility is much more devastating. Some insecticides could be attached to the body of the bee. The nectar and pollen can be contaminated with the chemicals. When these are brought back to the hive, the insecticides will spread and unleash an epidemic. Many will be infected through contact with the carrier bee or through consumption of the pollen or nectar. Climate change is affecting every organism in the world, as well as bees. They aren't able to colonize new areas fast enough and die due to the temperature changes. Some bees have started to migrate towards the Earth's poles, but not all bees are able to adjust and move from location to location as easily. Also, the carbon dioxide levels have been reported to be related to the drop of protein levels found in pollen. With the decrease of protein on top of the already present problem of malnutrition, the bees are sure to struggle. This is a problem in the natural world because with continued bee deaths and disappearances, it will get increasingly harder to pollinate the producers. This means that plants will struggle to reproduce at their normal rates. Currently, although scientists all over the world are researching the topic, CCD has no known cure. There is hope though. With the bees dying from disease and malnutrition, theoretically, the ones who survive have better immune systems and better nutrition. If one is a fertile female, the bees could bounce back and create super bees. Some people are planning for the worst and have started to create drones. Drones are robots that pollinate the flowers and already in the southwestern part of China, some farmers have to pollinate their crops by hand. These drones are extremely primitive. So far, they are only prototypes and won't perform well enough on a real farm. Some real world solutions include planting different wildflowers to avoid ba Nope. Some more realistic solutions include planting different wildflowers to avoid bee malnutrition. Bees would be able to collect more pollen and nectar with more diverse flowers resulting in more nutritious nectar and honey for the bees. With the variety of flowers around, the bees would have better nutrition in their nectar and pollen, resulting in the possible bounce back from the bees. Also, refraining from the overdone usage of pesticides and insecticides can help reduce the death of bees. On top of that, planting plants that repel pests or draw natural pest eaters will be good for the bees. Also, when figuring out what plant to plant, think about the color of them. Bees are great at seeing color, but their eyes are shifted towards ultraviolet. This means that some colors are hard for the bees to see due to the ultraviolet shift. So, plant flowers that are yellow, white, or purple. Another way to help bees can be as simple as leaving out a vase of water. Bees still need a source of water. Although they gain most of it from the nectar they extract, some types of bees, including honey bees, need more than that. So, you can simply put out a vase of water with some flowers in your backyard to give the bees their own little water fountain. Even with these easy ways to aid the bees in their recent struggles for survival, Things are not looking good. For now, scientists and biologists will continue to look into different possibilities for the causes for CCD. Bees are continuing to disappear, and the world is working hard to find out why. We might learn the solution to this sometime soon, but if we don't, the world is technically screwed.